We got uh, on to the night slate. We got on Big Ten Network, a Big Ten game here, Nebraska versus Purdue. Looks like Purdue's laying five and a half, 48 across the board on SBR odds right now. How are you looking to bet this Big Ten matchup, Ed? Yeah, so this is a game in which I like the over. Uh, Nebraska is a very interesting team because I've never seen quite a lame duck head coach as much as Mike Riley. Uh, Nebraska fired the athletic director earlier this season. Uh, Riley is, uh, his days are numbered there. But what I like about this game is how Nebraska's offense has performed over the past two games. Uh, they've been able, they've gone up against two top 10-ish type defenses in Ohio State and Wisconsin. Um, actually, I think two of the best teams in the country. They have put up 6.2 yards per play, which is good. Those, uh, that production and that performance really hasn't shown up on the scoreboard. And I think that's what's driving this total uh, lower than what it should be. Uh, I think Nebraska's offense has been surprisingly good this season. I think they'll score, even though Purdue's defense has been good. Um, I think we'll see some points on both sides of the ball. We talked about Nebraska's offense. Uh, Purdue's offense isn't fantastic, but uh, Nebraska's defense isn't great. They have a couple guys dinged up in the secondary. And I was just talking to some people. I had Bob Stoll on my podcast this week and talked about how important injuries are in the secondary. So I see more than 51 points in this game, and I like the over. Yeah, th this one's kind of surprising with that Purdue offense sitting at 48. So going with the over in the Nebra Nebraska-Purdue game. Around the same, same time slot, we got it. this one on ABC in the Big 12. Texas Tech versus Oklahoma. Oklahoma laying 20 at home, 73 the total. How you betting this one, Ed? Yeah, this is definitely one in which I like the over. I mean, these teams scored, what, like 500 points last year when, these, when they got together? Um, I see the reason why the total is only in the low 70s this year. Texas Tech defense has gotten a lot better. This was a unit that was awful last year, but they had a lot of injuries. So you saw a lot of guys in the secondary getting some playing time. They've bounced back. They're a much better defense. You've seen similar things with Oregon's defense, where they had a lot of injuries last year, were awful, and you see the bounce back because you have players. Uh, that have some experience. But in Oklahoma, you have the most explosive offense in the country. They are a clear number one when you're looking at my adjusted yards per play. Um, we all saw how they destroyed an Ohio State defense earlier this year. That Ohio State defense is actually fifth in the nation in my adjusted yards per play. So just shows you how explosive this offense is with Baker Mayfield. Um, as good as I think Texas Tech's defense is, I think uh, Oklahoma is going to score a lot of points. And, and then Texas Tech, their offense is good. Uh, I see them scoring a lot of points, too. The only thing worry you have in this game is if a couple turnovers really tip the favor in Oklahoma's uh, way early in this. If, if this game gets out of hand and Oklahoma starts slowing the game down to preserve the victory. Um, but I, I don't think that happens. I, I like the over in this game. All right, so Ed on the over, Texas Tech, Oklahoma, also on the over in the Nebraska-Purdue game and on the App State side in the App State versus UMass game. He's been a 2 and one machine. Last week just went 1-2, and two, so bounce back mode, but nonetheless, very profitable this season. So hats off to you on that, Ed. And I'm not fired after week. last week. What's that? I'm not fired after, I'm not fired after last week, Drew. Dude, one and two? Now, hell no, show. man. You're, you're just sure. a, a, a drop in the pan here, man. You've been profitable. Right, we, man. we appreciate it much. What, what else has caught your, uh, caught your attention college football betting-wise so far this year that you want to bring up? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, we've talked a lot about Colorado State uh, over the past couple weeks. We could have talked about them again this week, about how they have an awesome offense and a stinky defense. But I don't know. I thought the listeners would get bored. That doesn't mean that Colorado State isn't a team that you should consider, especially on that total this week. Um, we're here in Ann Arbor. We're still getting over that hangover of that game at uh, Happy Valley last week, and then Penn State goes to Ohio State. So uh, definitely an interesting game. I don't know how that's not the night game, but they play at 3.30 tomorrow. Huge Big Ten game with a lot of playoff implications. Yeah, man. Do you, do you have any opinion on the NC State-Notre Dame matchup? Yeah, you know, uh, that is a side I actually wrote down. Um, is that game still at three, three and a half-ish? Um, no, I, I think it, it, no, it's at seven. Oh, it's at seven. Yeah, I, th I think, um, you know, my numbers really like Notre Dame. Uh, they caught a break a little bit last week because USC had a couple of pretty key injuries on that defensive line, and Notre Dame was really able to dominate on the ground. I'm not sure they do that against NC State. Um, but, you know, Notre Dame has been a heck of a team this year. Um, somehow have been flying under the radar. 
Uh, their only losses to Georgia by a single point, and Georgia has been, also been one of the top five teams in the country this year. So I definitely see Notre Dame winning that game. Uh, I'd have to go back and look at what what my numbers say, uh, but exactly by how much. North Carolina State's clearly an interesting team. They got some pretty big wins this season. Uh, they also have a kind of inexplicable loss to South Carolina. Um, definitely a team that's on the rise, but but I think I think Notre Dame is is the better team, and they're at home this week. Well, I, I don't necessarily disagree with you, but from just a matchup standpoint, you know, NC State's defensive front, I, I believe they're a top 10 rush defense. And you can just tell those guys get after it. So matchup wise for Notre Dame, it's not like you, you brought up against USC. They, they kind of controlled it like that. I, I think that they're going to have a yep. tough time against NC State. So you going with the favorite, that doesn't worry you with uh, NC State. And I, I believe NC State's off a of bye week as well. So a cu couple things. Oh, yeah. I yeah, I need to do a little bit more research on that, Drew. And and I would completely agree. I mean, I've heard a lot about this NC State front NFL guys on the defensive line, and that's going to be a much different story than playing against USC's backups last week. Yeah, for sure. Good point there, Ed. Well, um, yeah, man, anything else? And where, where can the uh, listeners find you? Yeah, you can always find me at the Power Rank on Twitter. Uh, all the good stuff on my site goes on my email newsletter, so you can sign up for that at thepowerrank.com. You get a sample of uh, the member predictions that are usually reserved for paying members of my site. So you can sign up for that at thepowerrank.com. All right, for Ed Fang, I'm Drew Martin. We'll see you next week. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos. So please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now, not to mention a visit to our industry leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.